In this video, we are going to break apart Scott Sparkler's C Pro's model swing arm, rear suspension part. Basically, what applies here, it will also apply to any other uh, spark of this new generation. <laughs> In order to begin with, first of all, we have to remove the cranks. This specific model originally came with Race Face Next SL cranks, which sense system, but I changed them into Shimano XT uh, from Stages Cycling. So, depending on your cranks, you will have to do the procedure. If you are going to do maintenance of your own for a swing arm, probably you have done it, and you know that you should always keep aware of the spacers and washers and everything which comes on your cranks in order not to offset the distance either way. So let's just do that and we will begin from the bottom and bolt which is 30 Torx. Once removed it will also have thick washer underneath so be aware that uh, it should be also removed before unscrewing the bolt on the other side. Basically it has an axle which goes through the whole bottom of the swing arm and this is essential thing to notice that it rotates from this side uh, clockwise where normally you would do it uh, counterclockwise. I will also elaborate about this. You could have seen that it was a bolt which kind of uh, screws on top of the axle and axle still remains in the swing arm. Very small and tiny Torx uh, handle should be used in order to remove the cover of the swing arm bottom. And you can see that it looks not very beautifully because there are a lot of scratches uh, from the dust. And even though I added a sticker, I done it a bit too late afterwards and it was still better than nothing. We'll continue from removing the top bolts uh, from the swing arm and the one thing to point out here is that if you are uh, unscrewing those bolts from the outside of the bike, that way direction of rotational uh, movement is counterclockwise as normally. However, if you do the same thing from the inside as you can see here, then you should go in the opposite way which is clockwise. So. This is just something to keep aware of and you can see that here I'm just doing the same thing for the outside and then looking from the right side of the bike it would be a counterclockwise rotation. The spacers on top of a swing arm are neatly described and you will definitely not mess things up as long as you will read what's written on them. So it's just the inside and outside. So if you are planning to reuse the same bolts in the assembly, make sure to clean out all the thread lock. Uh, these bolts without proper thread lock tends to just loosen out and start knuckling. Next, we are removing the bolts on the main pivot points. All of those bolts has the same 30 torques. Once the axle is removed, you can remove the pivots. I'm not exactly sure what this tiny bolt does, but I had some expectations that maybe it just tightens down uh, the fitting of this pivot but anyways I just uh, loosen it down in order not to mess things out. And the left side, non-drive side was a bit harder to remove uh, than it was on the right side. You can see that we are quite a lot of rust. You can see that it has a lot of scratches uh, from the dust at the top of the pivot and I could have seen it already when it was on the bike. To remove this axle I just added uh, 10 millimeters, which was used to unscrew it uh, from the drive side and just pushed it through. But at the same time I understood that if I'm going to remove it now, it will drop down uh, and will remain connected only through the shifting cable and the brake hose. So for that reason, I just added these uh, ties in order to make sure it hangs. This might be hard to remove depending on how well your bearings are looking. Then the bearings at the bottom becomes loose. There is an inner tube in between them. And that means that inner tube uh, has some play from that point. If you have some knocking sound, there is a huge chance that 
that part is causing you that noise. You can see that here I'm showing how I already uh, messed up this uh, axle uh, a while ago. I was trying to torque this axle from the non-drive side with a uh, uh, torx wrench and at the same time it just uh, broken the inner piece of the bolt and I was not able to continue through that side but thankfully there is still an option to remove this axle from the drive side with 10 millimeters allen key so that's a good way to remove it thankfully and I haven't busted my suspension. There are spacers on each of the bottom side and there is also additional metal one on the drive side. What's remaining here is that I'm going to remove the rear shocks. I'm not exactly sure whether I should uh, remove the air from that uh, before removal, but you can see that it moved down a bit uh, when I removed the air, and at the same time, I just thought that maybe it will cause a bit less stress if it's not uh, tightened. And screwing those bolts actually made the shocks to drop down and you would access to that uh, bolt at the top but well just because I didn't know how to do it I did it this way and and yeah you will also have to remove the cable in order to remove the shock. So it was first time I'm disassembling this and in some cases I was not exactly sure how to do it but thankfully it was all removed uh, Issues free, I would say. When everything is removed, it is essential to have a look whether there are no cracks or similar things. The reason why the shock inside had a bit of a dirt and why I looked into the frame from the inside as well is because one time I kind of lost the cover because someone hit at me and the handlebars it just appeared to be straight into the cover but other than that I had zero problems with that cover and there are kind of no issues with it at all. So here is the tricky part is that you could actually try to do this swing arm uh, maintenance without actually removing brake hose and shifting cable and the reason why I'm trying to do this uh, now is because once I did it with removing it and trust me it was a pain in the butt to make sure those cables go through where we have to go. There are quite a lot of scratches and on the white frame they can be visible very clearly but uh, that's how it goes when you have a white bike and you go into the muddy places. I'm going to replace all the bearings just because uh, the bike itself has 5000 kilometers already. So I better do it in the off season rather than later down the road uh, have to figure out where that noise is coming from. I have a full service kit and you could have seen how I showed it came with updated axle. Uh, for the top of the shock, so that's a good thing to know. Other than that, we are going to remove and replace all those bearings with new ones, as well as other parts in the swing arm. Stay tuned. We are going to slaughter this white beauty, but first things first, safety. It's essential to use gloves when working with chemicals or just oils and other stuff in general when you are doing bike maintenance but of course it's not as much comfy to work with gloves but it's very much good for your health. I would strongly suggest to clean everything as precisely as you can just because when you are going to uh, press out the bearings if there are mud or sand it might hurt your frame even more and here I am adding few pieces of fabric in, in order that swing arm won't touch the frame directly. After cleaning the frame, I'm going to do the same thing about those main linkages as well. You can see that there are already a lot of scratches there and uh, even a rust on that pivot itself. And what I'm going to do here is going to uh, lose your mind but don't worry 
everything is under control and it's just to eliminate a bit of the rust. Before you're going to say what I have done with that sanding paper, be aware that it was very soft because it was previously used on the brake uh, rotors, so it was soft just to eliminate that rust. And one thing was I not aware of is what this bolt does. And thanks to Bernardo Vargas who said that this is to hold this preload ring and to add this even further, this one unscrews from the pivot. You can see that there is a thread there. Probably there is some special tool to unscrew this down, but here how it looks like. I will add additional information about this in video where we'll be reassemble everything back into place. But this is just a heads up that you would know about this because I didn't knew and I barely saw that. But now once I understood it's here, things are making a lot more sense now and we will cover this in the upcoming video. The plastic cover which uh, goes on top of a swing arm actually scratches the frame quite a lot so for that reason I also applied protective tape uh, somewhat in the past that way two uh, different material objects won't scratch that much. And here you can see that I'm showcasing how the movement of old generation bolt is inside the bushing. It's not nothing major but I've seen uh, some guys having a lot more play here. But uh, hopefully the new bolt, even though it's not for that reason of being replaced, it could help a bit more. Once everything is properly cleaned, we'll begin eliminating the bearings with a mix of multiple tools which are not exactly uh, suitable for that purpose. Because I don't have a press tool, I just try to do something with what's on hand and one of that is a bottom bracket bearings removal tool and uh, actually you should be very uh, careful with this because inside around the bearing there is not that much space but this tool fits perfectly around the edges so when knocking with the hammer be sure that those edges are pointing on the bearing and not into the frame because the distance there uh, between your error and not is very thin, so be aware of that. Next, we will try to do something with what I made up uh, from a bottom bearing uh, press tool and actually I kind of had idea to use the ball head here and uh, apply some additional elements on this axle and on this uh, threaded rod, but eventually I understood that, well, <laughs> I'm going to use too much of those, so I'm going to do something else. And what I did here is that I just took, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 13 millimeters uh, head and it fitted perfectly on the uh, bearing. What's strange enough is that it went out very easily just inside your hands. So definitely it's not a perfect solution, but as long as it does the job, why not? So we can see that from time to time I'm just checking whether it does something and it actually did. And again, those pivots have some scratches uh, from the mud than riding in extreme conditions. Next, we are going to the chainstay uh, linkage, which again, when it's on the bike, is a bit more complicated to do so, but it's still possible. And what I'm using here is just a uh, metal piece which has flat surface in the end and by knocking it 
into four different sides. I'm just hitting in a few different locations on the bearing sides and it comes out very easily. Here is the inner uh, tube which comes between the bearings and actually this is the one which causes a lot of noise uh, if bearings comes down because how I noticed that is in the past the bearings were loose and inside there was a knocking sound so that was the reason how that knocking sound has been created. So here you can see the tool I'm using here. It's a bit out of focus, but you could have seen that it's just uh, an extender uh, to the ball head exactly matches the size of the beer. So that was it. It was a very simple process and I'm figuring it out that it's possible to do that without removing a swing arm because in the past I was doing that the swing arm removed and also I applied some sticker here so that was a good way to go. We'll continue to put those bearings in and then just reassemble everything back into place. Hopefully it will work. Will it? We will see. If somewhere around there are kids of yours, please hide them from this video because what I'm going to show you here is very much uh, dirty DIY. Uh, solutions here. There is nothing harmful for your kids, but what I have done here is that I used quite a lot of things which I found inside my house just to make sure that I am going to do something with those bearings. And it's definitely not perfect, but as long as it did the job <laughs> and I didn't screw anything up, I believe that it was still okay so basically uh, what i realized is that this threaded rod is not going to go through uh, the ball head which i had so that means i'm going to find something else to put that bearing in and what i figured out is that the piece which comes at the bottle axle through could be helpful for that because its um, diameter is exactly the same and it fits inside uh, the bearing hole. So that's how I approached it. And you can see that here I already did it a bit smarter way uh, by applying the bearing before putting it on top of the whole setup, shall we say. But uh, yeah, I used some washers here and there as well as uh, used washer from the basically uh, rubber washer which comes or plastic one which comes probably from the chainstay uh, linkage. So because it's already used quite a lot and I'm going to replace it, I just used it in order not to uh, scratch the surface even more. So you can see that it's not a very beautiful solution, but again, as long as it did the job, I'm fine with that because technically it would be ideal to have all those um, press uh, tools, etc. But because I don't have them at the moment and it's the first time I'm doing that, it was what it was. Because I have white paint, um, I'm going to at some point cover those uh, scratch frame pieces. What I'm doing when I'm adding uh, bearings is applying some grease inside the frame. Some say it's not necessary, some adds the grease on top of the bearing before adding it inside. Well, I'm not exactly sure what's the best way to do it, but just to make sure that the bearing slides a bit easier because I'm not using proprietary tools for this procedure, I'm just adding that grease inside and I'm not going to think that it will do something bad with it. So here you can have seen that initially I thought that maybe I will press it uh, with the bottom bracket tool, but then I realized that its diameter is too small and that way I'm going to put too much pressure on the bearing itself. So for that reason, I decided to use 27 millimeters uh, head. And actually to point out here is that this uh, main linkage, the top one, which uh, connects to the frame, 
has quite enough room to add the beer ring inside it and quite uh, deeply I would say so that's a good thing to make sure that the beer ring sits straight before you start doing that process then pressing this down you should be aware that it goes as straight as possible definitely uh, you don't want to mess things out if you are seeing that it's going uh, not straight as it should be just remove it out and start the same process again just because you don't want to mess out with your frame i wonder if it's better for you to see the whole process without any those cuts or those cuts are fine so if you have opinion about that please drop a comment and let me know because personally i hate when videos are 30 minutes long and they just become tedious to watch for that reason i'm doing those quick cuts to essential parts of the video but yeah let me know what makes sense It was a tough process and you could have seen that there was some sweat on my, my forehead. I was stressing a bit how to make it work just because there is a different thing when you are recording everything and uh, when you are just doing it basically without much of the thinking. So here I just used 17 millimeters uh, head in order to press down uh, the bearing. Be aware that yours head might be different in terms of the uh, outer size etc so always make sure to uh, choose the size if you are not using proprietary tools that fits right inside the hole so be aware of that and not use anything which is smaller or which is bigger you can see here i already did once uh, bearings for replacement then i removed the swing arm completely and this one is just an example that it's possible to do it without removing all those brake hose and uh, shifting cable i applied some grease on the inner tube i'm not sure whether it's required or not that was just a trial and error thing on my end the reason why i did it is because in the past it was causing quite a lot of noise and i was not exactly sure how to do it actually one disclaimer here is that it suggested to start uh, putting those bearings from the drive side i'm not sure what is the difference and uh, what difference it makes but yeah be aware of that and actually for this uh, tool which i made for pressing this bearing down is that i applied additional spacers on the non-pressing side in order to just offset the distance in order not to uh, scratch the swing arm because it's not straight down but it goes angular weight so i press down the bearings to the point where the inner tube doesn't move i'm not sure whether it's a good way to do it in the past i noticed that whenever i unscrew this bottom axle and if there is a play inside that tube that means there will be some sound during the suspension movement so in order to prevent that i just press down the bearings a bit more and maybe it's not a good approach but at least i am certainly sure that there will be no additional sound from the suspension and if you want to hear that sound here is some of the example how it goes everything's clean bearings in one remaining thing left is to put everything down so we will do that in the next video Oh shit. I'm fucked. If you don't want to get into this situation, I strongly encourage you to watch this video from start to the end and don't skip any parts just to avoid reaching out in such situation which I encountered here. I promise that this is not going to happen in this video and it will have everything in right order. With that said, we can begin assembling suspension and the swing arm of Scott Spark RC Pro. But before that happens, let's get back to the paint work. In the last video, I mentioned that I'm going to do some painting to the scratched areas. And with this marker, I just uh, covered some of them 
and at least they won't be as visible as it was uh, previously. We'll begin from removing the bushings. Initially I thought that maybe uh, they can be left as they are, but as long as I try to eliminate those from the frame, I realized that now it's a good idea to change them. So here I'm using nine size socket just to push it through from the other side because the edge of that yellow bushing inside the frame was very small and it was very difficult to push it from the inside so for that reason i used the socket and it went out uh, quite well as mentioned i thought that maybe they are not needed to be changed but trust me the difference between how tight the old one and how tight the new ones were is uh, significantly huge because it had some mud and all that stuff probably um, wear it out a bit so because it was included in the whole kit. I just uh, did that replacement and that's kind of it. Remember the preload ring, so it's important to add a grease onto the thread before applying it to make sure that uh, the easiness of rotating it is good enough. Important thing, do not tighten it uh, to the full extent just yet because it will control the distance from the frame rate later down the road. Inner linkage position should be looking downwards, not upwards, so it's just an arch towards the down. We're applying grease inside the inner linkage. And just to make it stick, I'm using a hex for the time being. Now I'm trying to do this with the linkage. Then adding those pivots, you have to also apply uh, the washer, but I will explain this a bit later. And you can see that uh, once you added the drive side uh, pivot, you should uh, do some uh, knocking with the rubber mallet in order to fit it in uh, towards the left side. But I just used hands. I removed this out just to make sure which bolt should be used because there were no dot on the side it means it should be used with uh, uh, 10 uh, newton meters uh, markup on the bolt and it's actually the same which was uh, previously in the bike but I just wanted to make sure and do you happen to know how and when 15 millimeters one is used maybe it's on lighter frames I'm not sure about that but yeah and here is the thing about the washers. Basically, there are two options how they can be applied with the black facing uh, the bearing or with the colored one, so metallic. Um, the bike originally came with metallic coming outwards, so black was towards the bearing, and the same was in documentation as well. But at the same time, we found one video which included uh, that washer at a different opposite. Uh, side. So for that reason I'm not adding those uh, in front of the camera so you could find out and make decision of yours but basically what we figure out is that uh, most locations and the fitting on the bike came with black towards the bearing. If you want to you can uh, experiment with that. My take on the topic is that black should be facing towards the bearings because it was that way originally. Remember a preload washer? Now it is the time when the bolt is tightened. You should rotate it towards the bottom. If you are facing the bike as I am here, the ring should be rotated in that direction. So towards me at the bottom. And you are doing that until the point when there is no movement in the linkage. So you will get an idea how it works. It just offsets the distance and make sure that the linkage presses into the inside. And once you make that rotation, then you just have to tighten the bolt which comes from the outside of the pivot. What this bolt does is that it keeps in place the preload washer so it doesn't move back again and it just sticks. Here I'm just making sure that it's not moving and everything is fine with that. We'll continue by linking the chainstay uh, linkage. I just realized that these are no longer needed for me. And yeah, I'm not very much environmental friendly with this one, but uh, that's how it happened when I wasn't prepared anything else. Make sure to spend your time in order to fit that rubber cover 
uh, on the cables because it just fits inside. Apply some grease to the bearing, just make sure that the washers fit and they don't move away and also add the washer metallic one on the drive side. Those washers are also in the same color way as the main linkage one and I am applying them black towards the bearing. Once everything in place, I'm just adding the axle and we'll continue from there. If you're interested in maintenance of a bike and you have Scott Spark, do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel and chances are very high that we'll meet again in the future. From the left side, you have to add this uh, nut. Whenever you are adding something into frame, you should always grease the circumference of that uh, nut. And when it comes to bolts, you should uh, apply the grease to the inside of the bolt, which is not threaded. So that way you will probably maintain uh, the smoothness of your suspension. That lock nut is applied from the drive side and it's rotated with 10 uh, millimeters hex. In order to tighten it up, you need to rotate it counterclockwise and uh, do the tightening from the drive side mostly. You should use thread lock on the bolt which will come from the left side. Here I just applied some additional pressure to the bolt from the left side just to make sure that it's tightened up up to the spec of 15 newton meters. Once that bolt is in, we can insert the shock. And uh, yeah, in intro, you could have seen one of my failure where I firstly uh, connected all the swing arm pieces and realized afterwards that it will be a lot more complicated to install uh, the shock. So for that reason, I made sure to unscrew that top swing arm bolts and repeat the same process again. Yeah, it was a bit of a bummer, but uh, I just for some reason haven't thought about it properly as I did that process. The top shock bolt is a bit difficult to tighten it up uh, while the pivots of swing arm are not connected, so I decided to do it afterwards to full extent how it's needed. Bolts at the bottom of a shock as well have to be greased a bit at the part where it goes into the bushing. This is the thing I haven't knew, and I found that in the tech book. Whenever something is being connected from the two sides, I always uh, tighten them up equally from one or from wherever, just to make sure that uh, not too much pressure is being applied from one side while other is not connected. The washers of the top side has no confusion, just applied red to the outside and blue uh, to the inside of the pivot connection. It is also suggested that you should apply thread lock to the inside of a swing arm, which I haven't done here. Most likely I will do that in the future because I'm going to apply some protective tape. One way or another the top swing arm will be disconnected once again, so yeah, that's just for visualizing purposes. And the only part left was this one with a dot, so I'm not sure where it would go, but uh, if you know, let me know in the comments. That was it, full assembly of Scott Spark RC Pro 2022 model. If you're interested about previous steps, I will drop link into the comments. If such content is interesting to you, feel free to subscribe to the channel and chances are very high that we will meet here again in the future. Thanks a lot for your time and I hope to see you around.